Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, today is July 30, the year 2020. And uh, this is going to be on some things of what the Lord says about fasting uh, this is obviously not going to be a comprehensive study, just a few things here and there. So, with that being said, well, a little update here. I went to the, um, the King James Bible Online comment section. Well, I was Chaplain Bob there for a while, and somebody said that we should love everybody. And I asked them, in a comment I was like well uh, are we supposed to love Satan and they replied everybody so I asked them do you love Satan next thing you know I can't post on there anymore well then I became Bob Hilt uh, if you don't know what a Hilt is it's the uh, it's part of a sword that connects the handle to the blade and uh, I quoted some verses, of, uh, well, words of Jesus and Paul concerning the you-know-whos. And I got told that I was anti-sem-it-ick. Yeah. Um, and then I pointed out that those were the words of Jesus and uh, did matter. I'm at the point where, you know what? Let the people bless those that hate and curse Jesus. Let them bless them all they want. You know, I'm, I'm at the point I don't care. I see why the Lord deceives these people wants them to believe in the pre-trib rapture because they're blessing those that curse him i mean really so and it doesn't matter what you show them it doesn't matter because god has blinded their eyes not satan god has blinded their eyes so uh we could take a look. Now, if you do not believe that the Lord will deceive people, may I suggest you turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14. Harsh words. You want to put your little sins and your little wicked little things ahead of the Lord? He will deceive you. Let's take a look at Ezekiel 14:9. And if the prophet, or TV preacher, I guess, that would be the modern Bible Bob translation, and if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. We're not talking about Satan's prophets. No. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet and will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Read Ezekiel 14.4 and Ezekiel 14.7. You know, you want to put idols up in your heart and uh, have wickedness? Uh, he will deceive you. And I honestly think that that's where these people are. Um, you will find that the Zionism, the pre-trib rapture, and dispensational theology, which is basically, they chop the Bible up into periods of time and say, well, this b Bible verse belongs to that period of time, and then this Bible verse belongs to this period of time. And it doesn't matter what you show them, they'll just explain it away. Oh, you know, that was for the old times. That doesn't apply to now. Uh, you know, I mean, it's... it's is devilish it really is so and think about it what is the pre-trib rapture going to do to all these people well think about it 
if they don't think they're going to be here for the mark of the beast, no, not think, they're positive, 100%. You can show them as many Bible verses as you want. Oh, well, that was for Israel. We're not Israel. So that doesn't apply to us. That's their responses. We're the church. And you don't see the church after Revelation chapter 3 or 4 or whatever it is. And they'll explain it away. But they're convinced. Not going to be here for the tribulation. So when they can't buy or sell without having something, a mark, in the right hand or in their forehead... Oh, that's not the mark. We're not going to be here. So it's okay to take whatever this thing is. And besides, we can't buy or sell without it. So, oh, you know, and we can't tithe to our our church. My pastor told me, he says, we got to take this because if you don't, you can't tithe. And it's, of course, it's amazing. All the Old Testament laws were nailed to the cross except for the tithe law. So keep Keep those tithes coming in to support your uh, your uh, internet preacher or whatever, TV pastor or uh, your local corner deceiver, you know, and they bless those that curse Jesus. They bless those that hate Jesus. And you think, you think the Lord's going to be pleased with them? I don't think so. So, let's, uh, let's read some things about fasting. And, uh, yeah, I keep saying I'm going to move soon and get off the Internet. And I keep doing stuff, but, you know, what can I tell you? Let's go to Book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 1. And boy, I tell you what, Jeremiah is a depressing book, but it's, you know, just as applicable today for the Western world as it was back then. It's just people don't get it. You know, the, uh, the pre-trib rapture churches will say, oh, well, you know, that doesn't apply to us. But who's right? Are they right? I don't know. We'll find out shortly, won't we? But you know what? Uh, one thing I do want to add. When severe persecution comes, and I'm talking about people getting their heads cut off or denying Christ, a few of them are going to, they're going to look and see who are the ones being persecuted time of T Jacob's trouble, and who is doing the persecution. And it's totally opposite of what the churches, the so-called churches, the demon nominational so-called churches teach. It's, the, it's going to be the opposite. Hopefully some of them will wake up and realize that uh, those that they were blessing are just what Jesus said, you know, hypocrites, liars, murderers, children of the devil, twofold more the child of hell. I'm hoping some of them will wake up. But then again, yeah, you know, their pastors will explain it all away, you know. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Uh, take out the R and you're talking uh, death. Dearth and death has <laughs> just about the same meaning, right? Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Now, remember, uh, Jeremiah was prophesying to Judah about uh, their punishment. Part of Judah was carried away by the Assyrians in their captivity. They never returned to the land. And then Jerusalem and other part of Jeru uh, Judah were carried off into captivity by the 
Babylonians for 70 years, and then they returned. And you can read about that in the last uh, book or, or chapter or two in Daniel, and Ezra and Nehemiah. And uh, that's something that uh, they just don't cover. So, so in verse 3, And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. Drought. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads because the ground is chapped for there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Yeah. Now what happens when there's no rain? Famine. What follows famine? Disease. Because your body can't fight disease if it has no food. Verse 5, Yea, the hind also calved in the field and forsook it because there was no grass. So the wild animals had a child and uh, they wouldn't even give it any milk because there's no grass. And if the uh, animal can't eat the grass, they can't produce milk. So, verse 6, and the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us. Well, what's iniquity? Sin, wickedness. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake. For our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. O oh, the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? Why shouldest thou be as a man astonied, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O oh Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. Thus saith the Lord unto this people, Thus have they loved to wander. Yeah, they wandered away from the Lord. Thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. This is, whoo. Then said the Lord unto me. Now, the Lord is speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. Listen to this. The, then said, said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. Pray not for this people for their good. Yeah, don't pray for these people for their good. Uh-uh. Nope. Don't you dare. Uh, it's like in the days of Noah when the Rain started coming down. The door of the ark was closed. The hand of God actually closed the door of the ark. Those that were inside were inside, and those that were outside were outside to stay. There was no more remedy. That was it. Pray not for this people for their good. And I think this is how we, about what we are at America. Verse 12, when they fast, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, war, and by famine, and by pestilence, disease. So there's going to be war, starvation, and disease. Listen to this. Then said I, Ah, Lord, God, behold, the prophet say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword. Uh, the TV preachers say, Ye shall not see the tribulation. We got the pre-trib rapture. We're the church. God would never do that to the church. 
Behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Oh, yes. Has anything changed in, oh, I don't know, 3,500 years, 2,500 years, whatever it was? I don't know exactly when Jeremiah lived before Christ, but, uh, you know, 25 to 3,500 years. Then said the Lord unto me, The prophets prophesy lies. The TV preachers lie. I mean, I'm sorry. The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. I didn't send them. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. And a thing of naught, nothing. And the deceit of their heart. You know why preachers don't teach this stuff? Because it's depressing. I get depressed just reading this stuff. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. Oh, yeah. These TV preachers that say, oh, there's not going to be any trouble. We're going to be out of here. Pre-trib rapture? Yeah. By sword and famine, those TV preachers are going to be destroyed. Verse 16. And the people to whom they prophesy, prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and of the sword, and they shall have none to bury them. Them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. You know why there's not going to be any to bury them? Because nobody's going to be left alive. What did Jesus say? Let the dead bury the dead? Yeah. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them, Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with a very grievous blow. If I go forth into the field, then behold the slain with the sword, and if I enter into the city, then behold them that are sick with famine, yea, both the prophet and the priest, go about into a land that they know not. Yeah, they're getting ready to go into uh, captivity in Babylon. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hath thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us? And there is no healing for us. We looked for peace, and there is no good. And for the time of healing, and behold, trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Do not abhor us. Abhor means hate. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? In other words, uh, how about the Indians' rain dance? Did that work? Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Art not thou he, O Lord, our God? Therefore we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. How about we read, let's see, Jeremiah 36. Uh, verse 1, I guess. Maybe we'll read the whole thing. I'm not sure. Oh, it's a long chapter. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Now, Josiah was a good king, and he had a son. And, uh, Evidently, the son was not like the father. Verse 2. 
Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah, not the same people, and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I propose, uh, which I purpose, purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Now, the Lord will forgive, but, you know, you got to ask for forgiveness and then turn away from the evil. You know, you just don't say a sinner's prayer and say, oh, forgive me, and then, uh, you know, go down to Vegas and after you've hit the uh, whorehouse and then get drunk in the uh, casino... Uh, that's not how it works, in case, you know, any of you don't know that. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm being facetious here. Verse 4, Then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book, and Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up, I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Therefore, go thou and read in the roll which thou hast written from my mouth, the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house, upon the fasting day, upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. Uh, there was a day in the fall it was called the Day of Atonement, and that was a day when everybody would do the fast. So, verse 7, It may be they will present their supplication before the Lord and will return every one from his evil way, for great is the anger and the fury that the Lord hath pronounced against this people. Oh boy. And Baruch, the son of Neriah, did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading in the book the words of the Lord in the house, in the Lord's house. So I guess Baruch was kind of like uh, the secretary, the scribe. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. Then read Baruch, in the book, the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the higher court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house, in the ears of all the people. When Micaiah, the son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, had heard out of the book all the words of the Lord, then he went down into the king's house, into the scribe's chamber, and lo, all the princes sat there, even Elishama, the scribe, and Delahiah, the son of Shemaiah, and El Nathan, the son of Ekbor, and Gemariah, the son of Shephan, and Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. Then Micaiah declared unto them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read the book in the ears of the people. Therefore all the princes sent sent Yehudi, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Cushai, unto Baruch, saying, Take in thine hand the roll wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people, and come. So Baruch, the son of Neriah, took the roll in his hand and came unto them. And they said unto him, Sit down now and read it in our ears. So Baruch read it in their ears. So the scribe, Jeremiah's secretary is reading all these words to the, the princes and royalty and important people in Judah. And it came to pass when they had heard all the words, they were afraid both one and another and said unto Baruch, we will surely tell the king of all these words. And they asked Baruch saying, tell us now, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? Then Baruch answered them, He pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book. 
Then said the princes unto Baruch, Go, hide thee, thou and Jeremiah, and let no man know where ye be. Why? See, these people were some faithful followers of the Lord. Why are they saying, don't tell anybody where you are? Because they know that the king, the wicked king, is going to have them put to death. So, what happened? And let no man know where ye be. And they went to the king and into the court, and they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elishama the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. So the king sent Yehudi to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elishama the scribe's chamber, and Yehudi read it in the ears of the king, and the ears of all the princes that stood beside the king. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Yehudi had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yeah, instead of listening to the Lord's words, they chopped it up and threw it into the fire. And guess what? I'm sure when he did that, his name was blotted out of the book of life. People don't believe that. Their names can be blotted out of the book of life. That's another lie the churches teach. Oh, once saved, always saved. Eternal security. But Jesus said that our names could be, you know, he said names could be blotted out of the book of life. Huh. until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants had heard all these words. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Deliah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. Hmm. Then the, you can read verse twenty-six, and they wanted to uh, they wanted to get the scribe and Jeremiah, but uh, but the Lord hid them. Yeah, bad news bears. And if you want, you can read it again on your own. So uh, yeah. All right, let's read Isaiah fifty-eight. Verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of judgment and take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they? Oh yeah, they say, well, we fasted. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the days of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. In other words, they're having a fast unto the Lord, but they're you know, the guys are playing with their wives and they're, uh, you know, going to the market and selling their stuff. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like you were so busy you just skip breakfast to them, I guess you could say. Verse 4, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite or, you know, beat with the fist of wickedness, ye shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. In other words, don't keep doing what you're doing because, you know, you think I'm going to listen to you? Uh-uh. Verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable, acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So instead of doing what you're doing, this is what I want you to do. 
to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? You know, like the homeless, right? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. In other words, your own family that are doing bad, you know. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. Huh. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. Oh, I'm sorry, here am I. Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. The putting forth of the finger, is that the uh, giving people the bird, the middle finger, and speaking vanity? Is that, you know, is that people giving them the finger, the bird, and then telling them to, you know, go, I hate to even say it, they F themselves, I don't know. You know, I read that, and that's, that's kind of how I look at it. Verse 10, And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Verse 13, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. You know, that's... That's usually the day that I uh, try to do my Bible studies. And call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the her heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Huh. All right, let's go read from the book of Joel. Or we're going to read chapters 1 and 2. Uh, Joel is ties in a little bit with um, end times, like Revelation. Uh, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Beth Pethuel, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your father? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palm or worm hath, uh, hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Uh, sounds like... There's not anything left. Awake, ye drunkards. Boy, does that sound like America today? Um, what are people doing in the lockdown? Uh, getting drunk and uh, watching porn. Well, why not? What else is there to do, the world will say. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the cheek of a lion, I'm sorry, are the teeth of a lion, and hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare, and cast it away, 
The branches thereof are made white. Now, the vine um, was representative of, of Israel as a whole, all 12 tribes. And the fig tree is representative of Judah. Judah is part of Israel, but not all of Israel is part of Judah. So, now what happens when you bark, when you scrape the bark away of a tree? The tree dies. I mean, uh, the bark is what protects the inside of the tree from insects and other stuff. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth, sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Sackcloth is uh, uncomfortable clothing. Uh, you'll almost never see a king wearing sackcloth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, mourn. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, and for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. Howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves. In other words, put on, you know, clothing. Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests. Howl, ye ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth. Ye ministers of my God, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Why? There's nothing. You can't sacrifice anything because they don't have anything. The people are starving. Verse 14. Listen to this. Sanctify ye a fast. And that's what we're doing Friday evening. Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry. Cry unto the Lord. Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land unto the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Boy, we need this today, but uh, you're not going to hear that on TBN. Uh, alas for the day, for the day of the, of the Lord is at hand, and as destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off from, uh, cut off before your, our eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God? Yeah, there is no joy, there is no gladness. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate, the barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. Yeah, they're starving to death. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Well, guess what? When there's no rain, the fields become dry, and then all it takes is a spark, and then everything burns up. Verse 2. Now, this verse, uh, uh, chap Joel chapter 2, this verse is, wow. Uh, it's talking about the end times. It could be talking about, you know, our coming days. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. Remember at the crucifixion of Christ, it was dark for like three hours at noontime. 
why is it a day of darkness and gloominess? Well, that's for the the wicked people. Uh, let's see. A day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their faces, before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. You can read about this in Revelation and Matthew 24. It ties in. All right, this is going to be a two-part thing. Um, we'll continue in Book of Joel in Part 2. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.